Hey, what's up guys? It's Jonathan from Game Dev HQ. I'm here to share with you a sneak peek into our new course, the Unity C Sharp Survival Guide, created in partnership with Unity Technologies. For more quick tips and behind the scenes action, join us at gamedevhq.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the post processing stack V2. Now, to get started with the post processing stack, if you're not familiar with it, essentially it allows you to add filters to your main camera such as what you would typically see in cinematic films. Or you can think of it as Photoshop for your video games. To get started with the post-processing stack, we need to access it or install it through the Package Manager. So we're going to go to Window, Package Manager, go to All, and we're going to install the post-processing. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see here that there is a post-processing preview. Let's install this. This will take several minutes to install into your project, just let it compile. Once it's finished, you'll see it inside of your packages folder at the bottom. Now that the download has finished, you'll see inside my packages folder that we have a post processing folder. That's going to allow us to create post processing effects. Now, to get started with post processing effects, we need to add or enable it. And to enable it, we're going to add a component to our main camera. We're going to add a post process layer. What this is going to do is decide which layer is going to or which layer is going to accept a post-processing volume. You'll see here that it automatically attached our main camera. For the layer, it's set to nothing and it says no layer has been assigned. The trigger will never be affected by volumes. In order for post-processing to work in the V2 stack, we need to assign it a layer. So to do that, we're going to go to layer and we're going to add a new layer. Now, by default, we, there is no layer for post-processing. So on user layer 8, you're going to add post-processing. Once you've done that, you're going to select the main camera, and you're going to assign the layer of post-processing. What this is going to allow us to do is then attach volumes to that layer. The next step is to create a volume. So we're going to create an empty object, and let's call this our post-process volume. This object is going to store all of our post-processing effects that we want to apply to the scene. In order for this to work, we need to add a component called post-process volume. There's an option here for is global. If that's checked, these post-processing effects will be applied to the entire scene. This is great because it allows you to have multiple volumes where you can have local volumes. For example, in a racing game, when you go through a tunnel, you could have special post-processing volumes that are activated only when you go through those tunnels. It's really powerful. So what we're going to do here is we're going to check is global because I do want the entire scene to be affected. The next thing we need to do is add a profile. In order to create a profile, we'll hit this new button and it's automatically going to attach a profile. From there, we can begin adding effects. For example, let's add bloom. Now, Bloom is a very easy effect to visualize because basically it takes the emission colors and we can increase the intensity. Let's turn on the intensity and let's go ahead and modify the colors here. You'll notice here that as I increase the intensity, nothing is occurring. If I change the colors, nothing's happening. Now, why is that? Well, the reason for that is because if you remember on the main camera, we're using the layer post-processing. Well, in order for the main camera to read post-processing effects, our volume has to be on the layer post-processing. By doing that, we can then apply intensity and you'll see here that our feet are beginning to glow. And now we can see all of our effects. To get a drastic change, let's go ahead and set the tone to red. Watch what happens when I take my layer from post-processing back to default. All of my post-processing effects will disappear. And that's because the main camera is looking for that post-processing layer. So by assigning that, we can then modify our application here. Now, I myself am a software engineer. I'm not very talented in the art field. If you give this to my partner, Al Heck, you're going to get something incredible. But what I want to show you here is how simple it is to get started with post-processing. So let's go ahead here and create a little bit of a bluer touch here. Let's go ahead and change the color here to blue. And let's see what we can do here, making something very simple, but also pretty cool. So here we have our intensity, and let's check out this threshold variable. And the best way to get familiar with the post-processing stack is to simply just experiment with it. 
So here you'll see here that as I increase, nothing's happening, but as I get closer to zero, we're getting that nice blue tint. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it here. And then I'm going to add on some diffusion here, and let's see what that's gonna do. And you'll see here it's kind of controlling the brightness intensity. So we'll go ahead and leave that at about seven. The next effect I wanna add here is gonna be color grading. And color grading is one of the easiest to use because basically you can set a temperature. And you'll see here that I'm getting a color space in project settings is set to gamma. In order for color grading to work, or to work effectively, we should be in linear color space. Linear is basically truer, brighter colors. So to change it, we can go to edit, project settings, player. Within here, there is something called color space. It's currently set to gamma. We're going to set this to linear, and everything's going to recompile. And our scene should actually look better for it. You can see here that now we have these interesting glow marks. It's more true, more realistic coloring. And if we select our post-processing volume and increase the intensity here, you can see here now we get these edges on our character. And that actually looks pretty slick. The next thing I'm going to do here is enable tone mapping. And let's go ahead and use like an ACES tone, which is going to kind of darken the scene. And maybe a neutral. Let's see what a uh, none does. I don't really see much of a difference. I'm going to put it on neutral. And then let's go ahead and add some temperature here. Temperature is one of my favorite because if I want to make it colder, I can go to the left. And if I want to make it warmer, I can go to the right. So I'm actually feeling a bit of a warmer vibe from this. And if I wanted, if I wanted to, I can add some tint to this. So you can see here that it's gonna add like a tint overlay. We can add some coloring, it gets really green and cold and yucky, uh, or we can make it more warm and vibrant. So I'm actually not happy with the tint though, so I'm gonna disable the tint. Looking at these, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you should recognize these trackballs. And if you wanted to enable those, uh, basically we can use the lit, uh, lift, gamma, and grain values, and we can use the channel mixes as well, which I'm not going to touch, but then we can go ahead and increase these guys however we see fit. So I'm not too familiar with these guys. I'm not an artist, so I'm going to actually set these back to default because I do like where I am going with this with subtle changes. So last but not least, let's add one more effect here, and one more is going to be a really popular effect, and that, and that is typically the vinet or vinette. And with this guy, I believe it is going to allow us to have some sort of camera focus mode. So I'm going to just basically enable everything here. And if I just check rounded, I don't see any major effect here. And if we increase the roundness here, I'm not seeing anything. If we increase the smoothness, I'm not noticing anything, the intensity, you'll see here that it's basically a camera focal lens, the vinette. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of make it to where it's, we're focused in on this. Let's increase the smoothness. Let's bring the smoothness down. The roundness of it gets a little tint shadow here. And then what I can even do here to really see how cool this is going to look is let's go ahead and bring in something else. Let's go to file base and bring in an explosion. So here I am at gamedevhq.com. I'm going to go to file base and I want to search for an explosion. So I'm going to go to VFX and I'm gonna download this explosion one. Accept the terms, and let's download it. Once it's downloaded, I can then extract it, and I'm going to import it into my project. So here in my project, after importing it, under VFX, I now have my explosion, and what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna drag the prefab of the explosion inside my scene. Now once we do that, it should automatically explode as soon as we run our application. So one of the things I want to make sure we do here is let's go ahead and position this guy right about here. I want to see it. One of the things with post-processing is I love working with the explosions because you can get some really cool color effects on them. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead here. Let's run the application. And let's check it out. And you can see here we get that awesome blue color effect um, during the explosion. And that's all from simple post-processing effects.